Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it's that time of the week. It's lecture time. This week's topic, guys, is an interesting one. It's on pre-market charts, something that many of you don't use and perhaps many of you don't even understand. So in the beginning of the lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about pre-market charts, what they are, post-market charts, what they are, as well as the regular session. So I'm going to explain all three sessions pre-market, post-market, and regular session, okay? And then we're gonna talk about how you can take advantage of those sessions, how you can trade those sessions. And one of the positives about using pre-market charts, guys, is you can literally be done trading by 9.45, give or take, 9.35, 9.45, 9.50 in the morning, because a lot of the entries that you'll be taking are right around 9.30 market open. One of the common questions that I get is, hey, Jared, when you post on stock twits, when you post on Twitter, when you have these morning ideas, I usually build a favorites list right around 9.25 in the morning, five minutes before the market opens. They go, well, how do you put those price points out there? Like for example, I might say, hey, I like BA over $150. And people go, well, how do you know to get into BA over 150, especially before the market opens, especially right as the market opens? Because I'm using pre-market charts to determine where I wanna get in. That's the trading from 4 a.m. to 8.30 or 9.30 a.m., sorry, okay? So this allows me to get a jump on everybody else. So sometimes you guys will see a stock gaps up or it gaps down. So you get a stock that gaps up and then it immediately just hits and runs off the market open, right? Just boom, off the market open. You sit there and you're like, I spent the whole pre-market scanning for this idea, this beautiful gap. And then as soon as the market opens at 930, it's gone. And then you're just left with your hand in your pants doing nothing. Right? Well, if you use pre-market charts, you can take advantage of those trades and you can get in them at 925, 928, 930, 931 and get in before the move happens. And not only that, get a better entry with a tighter stop loss and then your risk to reward also increases. So it's a very powerful lecture, guys. It's one I don't think you wanna miss because it's not a traditional lecture like everybody else is talking about. Oh, this is a buy set up, this is a breakout. This is using something that most traders that I've come across don't use. And I personally find it makes your trading far more accurate and far more profitable as well. Now remember, you don't have to buy them in the pre-market, but at least you know where the levels are. And maybe you can get in as sooner or before the stock actually hits and runs. Because like I said a second ago, there's nothing more frustrating in trading than to scan for 20 minutes before the market opens and then right as 9.30 hits, the stock's gone, it pops $5. Well, maybe you take advantage of the stock before it pops $5 so you can get that $5 gain and make thousands of dollars out of it. Now, I will say one thing. For newer traders out there, trading in the pre-market is a bit more dangerous because things are more spready, they're whippier, et cetera, and so forth. So you have to be careful trading in the pre-market. If you're a newer trader, please cut your share size back. I talk about that in the lecture as well. And one last caveat. Guys, I'm gonna keep putting them in all of these weekly lectures. If you guys keep sending them to me, I'm gonna keep putting them in. I go through two, actually three more traders this week who are doing stupid, stupid stuff. I should use a four letter word, but I won't. I'll just use stuff. Somebody losing $46,000 on a $52,000 account. Another person losing nine grand on a $50,000 account. Another person down 70,000 on a $100,000 account. What are you guys doing, man? This is a business, a real serious business. You have to treat it like a business. You have to have good money management good risk control. And you do that with a, a proper entry, a proper stop loss, and a proper target. And you risk small amounts of money when you're new. Stop watching all these furus out there, guys. These hype machines, oh my gosh, you can do this. This elephant bar comes in. Oh my, I made $20,000 in 10 seconds. It's not how it works, guys. Most of those people are giving every penny of that back and then some. In fact, I had a gentleman email me this past week, three months into trading, made $125,000 in three months. One, you should never be in that position. Your risk should be so small that you can't even make $1,000 your first three months. Why? Because you don't know your ass from a hole in the wall in the first three months. Long story short, he gave back 122 of his $125,000. Thankfully, he didn't go negative. But it goes to show what? Making the $125,000 was just dumb luck. 
because he gave it all back quicker than he made it. Stop doing these things, guys. Trading is a long-term business. You need to have that longer-term mentality. I need to put one, two, three years of time and effort into this to be really good at it. I know that makes some of you upset, but that's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. So I hope you enjoy this lecture, guys, on pre-market charts. I think it's one of the most powerful lectures I've given in a while. I think most of the lectures are solid, but this week's is very, very powerful because it's a topic most people don't talk about. All right, I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's topic is trading the market open for money. Learn the value of pre-market charts. Uh, I haven't talked about pre-market charts in a while. The market volatility over the past month, four to six weeks has been pretty extreme. So trading in the pre-market, although has been profitable, it's been tougher um, because of the volatility and things of that nature, which I will uh, allude to or talk about in a little bit. Um, but before I get into that, guys, uh, I know it's become a little bit of a weekly thing that we've been doing this for the, like the last three weeks. So I figured as long as I keep getting these emails, I'm going to keep bringing them up and showing them. So the question I have is, when will the insanity stop? And some of you right now are thinking, oh, he's talking about the market, right? When's the insanity going to stop? I am not talking about the stock market. I am talking about you guys and some of the ridiculously foolish stuff that you guys can find yourselves doing at times. And you just you just need to stop. I'm gonna show you a couple emails here. Um, this is no joke. I know I say it, it's, I'm beating a dead horse, but it takes a long time to save up money to trade, whether it's five grand, 50 grand, 500 grand. It takes people a long time to save that kind of money. And if you're not careful, you can lose that money in literally a matter of minutes, hours, and days. But it might take you months to years to save it up, okay? So I know it gets old, but Here's another email I just got. Okay, I just got this a few days ago. Um, I, I'm just gonna read the, the uh, pink part. I just started trying out day trading three weeks ago. That is key, that is key. I just started trying out day trading three weeks ago. Not three years ago, three, but three weeks ago, okay? As usual, I had really good gains on some days and made some bad decisions and ended up with big losses. I shorted on the DAX and the FTSE right before the three-day rallies, hoping they will still go back down after the rallies with the understanding, this is a person with three weeks of experience, by the way, with the understanding that we are in a bear market. You know, I'm guessing they read that somewhere, right? Um, I'm just getting more and more anxious as the market doesn't seem to be returning to the low before the three-day. Long story short, I am now having an eight to $9,000 loss on my $50,000 account. So this person has now cut out close to 20% of their account with three weeks of trading experience. So a new trader with three weeks experience is down nine grand. Guys, come on. I'm not even gonna spend that much time on it today, uh, on this particular stuff. I think you guys are getting the point, but I'm still getting these emails from people. And it's sad for me to read this stuff. You have three weeks of experience. What business do you have risking that kind of money? I mean, if I had just started basketball three weeks ago, do you think I'd go challenge LeBron James to a one-on-one -on -one or you know, a game of horse or something like that? I just started basketball three weeks ago. And, and to make it even more fun, let's bet 10 grand on the game, LeBron. That's about the dumbest thing you could do on, in, in, you know, ever. So why are people doing this? I don't know. Lack of education, ego, Google advertisements, I don't know. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but I just wanted to see, show you guys, these are the things that I get from people. Here's one, this is two different traders, okay? Two different traders, uh, and it gets worse. Let's focus on the right-hand side, in the black area right here, okay? This person's down $35,440 on a trade in the SPY. Now, if you take a look at their other trades, and by the way, they're also down $24,000 on MAR, uh, what are you doing, man? Like, look at this all over the map with their money management, risk management. I mean, if you take a look at Mar, all in on Mar, this person's down over thirty thousand dollars, right? They're down about thirty-five grand on Mar and another thirty-five grand on the Spy. So today's P and L is only thirty-six thousand now, but the overall, I mean, it's just it's sad. It's just sad to watch what people are doing. Some of these are options plays. Some of these are stock trades. It's just why? You got to ask yourself why. Where, 
How, when's the last time you made $40,000 overnight? Maybe it's happened because you risked your entire account, but you build this stuff up slowly, okay? Now, on the left-hand side, okay, it's the same person here, all right? Same person, but this person shorted, shorted TVIX, all right, at 102. Shorted TVIX at 102. I don't know because I haven't checked right this very moment, but the la yesterday TVIX was over $300, Okay, it was over three hundred dollars, um, and this person short at one hundred two. It was as bad as six hundred and some bucks. At that point in time, this person was down forty six thousand dollars. Okay, and if you read this stuff, it just you would think we're in a movie. For example, Tivix trading at nearly six hundred is pretty painful. You think? Okay, I'm willing to sit on the position for half a year, whatever it takes for it to come down so that I can close for a profit. I'm reading that specific line because I want you guys to think about the thought process that's going through this person's head. I want to close it for a profit. They're, they're not yet at the point where they're willing to accept the loss. They're waiting for the TIVX to go from 650 down to 100. And maybe that will happen for them. Maybe it won't happen for them. But what if it doesn't? What if the market just keeps on dropping, okay? And TIVX goes higher, all right? What, what are they gonna do? Gonna eat the loss? I mean, interactive brokers requires margin of 74,000 to hold the position. I have 52,000 in cash plus some securities in the account and you're down 46 grand. Think about that for a second. So this isn't somebody that has a million dollar account. This is somebody that clearly is on the threshold of a margin call. If you're on the threshold of a margin call, your account is not in the position to handle a $46,000 loss. So why would you put yourself in that position? Just think about that for a second. And yes, that is true. The market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent, okay? But to my amazement, I'm right at my limit. I can't be the only one sitting on a position like this. So this person is now looking for the misery loves company theory. Oh, well, it can't just be me. I'm not the only one in the world this dumb. There must be other people that are this dumb. Let's all get together so we can sing Kumbaya together as we all lose money because we're, we're so smart that we're so dumb enough that we're gonna wait for this to come back. We can't possibly lose on it. That's how smartly stupid we are stupidly smart we are whatever you want to call it i just call it dumb okay i'm showing this to you in case you guys didn't get how serious this business is okay three week trader lost nine grand of their 50 in three weeks and this person is losing basically their entire account okay sounds like fun doesn't it it's not it's not don't ever put yourself in this position if i continue to get these emails each week i will continue to put them in the lecture each week now it's time to move on to more important educational things that unfortunately don't have to do with money management today because today after reading these emails i think some people need some lessons on money management all right so what is today's topic it's a good one pre and post market charts okay so let's talk about this i'm getting a lot of people asking when i put up a chart in the morning like how do you pick your favorites list and i tell them i use pre-market charts to help pick my favorites list every morning well what are pre and post market charts so let's briefly discuss that i know many of you know what these are so just bear with me for a minute for all the people that don't know what these are all right the regular session of the market is 9 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern standard time that's new york city time okay it's corona time all right 9 30 a.m to 4 p.m that's normal market hours most people are aware of this what they're not aware of is the pre and post. Pre-market goes from 4 a.m. to 9.30 or technically 9.29 and 59 seconds, okay? New York time. Now, most of you will only see 8 a.m. to 9.30. If you have a direct access broker, they will let you trade 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m. But most, most of the pre-market activity, the heavy pre-market activity happens from 8 a.m. to 9.30. But it's available from 4 a.m. to 9.30. That's pre-market. Okay, post market is the second the market closes at 4 p.m. from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, anyone can trade these sessions. You are, if you have a direct access broker, you can trade post market, you can trade pre market, but mostly it's the institutions that are active during these times 
filling some overnight orders, um, making deals with other banks, et cetera. But you are free to trade these times well. So this is the basic definition of pre and post market. So now you know, okay? So let's take a quick look, all right? Here's Amazon from, was it yesterday maybe? Something like that. So I've outlined in pink what the post market session is here, all right? You can see the trading that goes on. In this case, it was relatively flat during this session, but there is volume. Okay, it's not like it's dead. Amazon's doing hundreds of thousands of shares during this time. It's from 4 p.m. when the market closes. You'll see a huge volume spike down here right at market close. And then it lasts right until 8 p.m. And then the next day we open, all right, at 9.30. Because again, I'm not showing pre-market on this. I will in a second. All right, and then the market opens and then at 4 p.m. it closes and then you get all this, okay? So that is what the post-market session looks like. It's outlined in pink. Let's take a look at the pre-market session. This is what the pre-market session looks like. 4 a.m. to 9.30, okay? Um, and you'll note, sometimes it's a bit more active um, than other times. Sometimes there's a lot more volume. We're gonna talk about this in more detail in a minute, don't worry. I'm just showing you what it looks like because not everybody puts this on their chart. I keep pre-market on my chart until 10 a.m. Let me repeat that. I keep pre-market charts up until 10 a.m. Okay, because I like to see where the highs and the lows of the pre-market are. Okay, so this is the pre-market session. This is the regular session. This is the pre-market session. This is the regular session. Got it? Okay, now let's take a look at the 24 hour. This is combining both the pre and the post market. Okay, so you can see a big pink block here. This is from 4 p.m. close up until what? Oh, I'm sorry, 4 a.m. open. I apologize. 4 a.m. open up until 9.30. And then we have regular market hours right here. And then we have the post market here. Okay. And you can see there's a lot of trading that goes on from 4 a.m. to 9.30. I mean, Amazon went from 1985 bucks all the way down to 1950 See, the difference is most of you guys that don't know what shorting is or you don't want to pre or post market is you wake up and there's a gap in a stock and that's it. And you go, oh, okay. Yesterday it closed at 1900, today it's at 1910. There's a $10 gap. No, there's actually trading that happens during this period of time. Notice, it's basically 24 hours. It's not because there's, what, eight hours of downtime from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. or 4 a.m. But there's really trading that lasts through this whole segment. So take a look at it. From 4 a.m. here, trades till eight o'clock. Notice where it opens at 4 a.m., right? Or right when the market opens, right? It opens right there, market trades, low of the day here at 4 p.m. and goes right into post market. So really, there are no real gaps. It's all trading, guys. So whenever you think of a gap, there's actually the stock traded into that price pre and post market. Okay? All right. So I think we got that pretty clear. Now let's move on. What are some of the attributes of pre and post market trading, particularly pre market trading? One, it's generally lower liquidity, lower volume. There will be exceptions to this. Some stocks are having a buyout or some stocks are having a secondary offering or there's some news report. And you might have a stock that does more volume in the pre-market than it does on a normal day. But generally, pre-market and post-market are what? Lower liquidity, okay? Especially the 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. session. They're spreadier and whippier, much spreadier. So if you have a stock that normally has a 10 cent spread, pre-market, it might have a 20, 30, 40 cent spread. Sometimes less, I'm just saying, they're much spreadier. I've seen times in the pre-market where Tesla has a five to $7 spread. That's crazy, it happens though. This is a big one and it's something a lot of you don't know. You can only use limit orders to get into a trade in the pre-market. You cannot use stop limit orders. You know how with most of our long trades and short trades, we use stop limit orders? All right, we give the stock a range in which we want to get into it. Say I want to get in at $70. I might start my order at 70 and I might go up to $70.10. I'm giving that stock 10 cents worth of room to enter. You can't do that in the pre-market, okay? You have to either bid for it or basically hit the bid. All right, so you can, if the stock is trading at $70 and you put an order at 69.50 long, you can do that, all right? But at the same time, you're gonna get filled almost instantly most of the time. So meaning it's harder to get filled in the pre-market because you don't have as many order types to choose from, which means you can't really predict the price. You're basically hitting the bid most of the time. Not always, but most of the time, okay? Now, what does that look like? 
when we're scanning guys, okay, I get this question frequently. How do you pick the price points for your favorites list? Well, I use dollar gainers and dollar losers. I use dollar gainers and dollar losers for every single thing I do in trading, whether I'm looking at it on a monthly chart, whether I'm looking at something on a one minute chart, if I'm scanning for gaps, if I'm scanning for swing trades, so intraday trades, string trades, core trades, I use dollar gainers and dollar losers. What you have here, guys, all right, I think this is a couple months back, but nonetheless, this is a pre-market, pre-market dollar gainers and dollars losers list. On the right, this is a dollar losers list pre-market. Now you'll notice a lot of the stocks in here do crap for volume in the pre-market. Here's zero shares on ANTX. Here's 18 shares on BKNG. Here's two shares. I don't care about those, okay? So as it says on the left here, some stocks like Micron, Bank of America, Citigroup, they always do a lot of pre-market volume, right? Why? Because they do a lot of intraday volume, right? MU might do 60 million shares in a day. So it might have a million shares in the pre-market and that's not unusual. What we are looking for, and this, there, you have to distinguish the difference. We're looking for the outliers. So our goal is to find the stocks that don't normally do a lot of pre-market volume, but today they are. I'll repeat it. We're looking for stocks that don't normally do a lot of pre-market volume, but today they are. For example, Tiffany at the very top of this list. Tiffany doesn't do 1.9 million shares in the pre-market. Not ever, ever, never, never. But today it is. In this case, Tiffany happened to be a buyout, but that's not the point. Tiffany is an outlier. Okay, Spotify doesn't normally do 67,000 shares in the pre-market. Spotify is an outlier. So remember, I'm never gonna take this trade without looking at the chart. I'm always going to look at the chart. But when I see stocks on my dollar gainers or dollar losers list that have two times, three times, five times normal pre-market volume, I'm very interested. Why am I interested? Next bullet point. It shows a level of institutional commitment, which usually means what? Above average trading ranges. See, guys, you and I, mom and pop traders, that's what we are. I don't care if you have a $10 million account. You're a mom and pop trader compared to an institution. You're not buying 1.9 million shares of Tiffany in the pre-market. You're not buying 65,000 shares of Spotify in the pre-market. You're not buying half a million shares of Microsoft. Institutions are doing this. You might buy 100 shares, 500 shares, maybe even 1,000, but you're not buying half a million. So when I see half a million shares of Microsoft or 67,000 of Spotify or 55,000 of Roku, I know that there's institutional interest in these stocks. Does that mean I'm going to close my eyes and just buy it? Heck no. We are pattern traders, which means we need patterns to trade. But it does show a level of commitment from the institutions. And if the institutions are committed, I want to piggyback that, right? Let the whale clear the path for you and you just ride the tail, all right? Ride the tail of the whale. We talk about it a lot, all right? We still need a good gap. So for example, if Roku has high volume, but it's gapping on the fifth day up, I'm probably not going to put it on my list. But if it's the first or second day up, and I see institutional money in this thing, I'm very, very interested in this. More interested than say GLPG at 2,700 shares. Why? Because GLPG does 2,700 shares every day. There's nothing special about GLPG. I wanna look for something special, okay? So I'm looking for above average pre-market volume with a good gap. We're not gonna talk about the gaps as much today. We're just gonna talk about pre-market charts, which I'm gonna get to in a minute. PCG right here, 1.8 million is a lot of shares in the pre-market for this thing, okay? So I'm interested, I wanna keep an eye on it. So that's what we're looking for, all right? Now, take a look at this for a second. This is Amazon from a while back, okay? But this is Amazon gapping up over a prior pivot. That prior pivot's in like the, I don't know, 1895 area, give or take, right? That where that red line is. It gaps up and just goes higher. And then after around, oh, I don't know, 11 or 11.30, it just fades and goes lower. So it gaps over a pivot, then rips off the open with no entry. I consider this to be somewhat annoying, right? That's annoying. You hate when you see a gap that you really like, and as soon as 9.30 hits, boom, it just rips. 
it's no fun for anybody because you spent the whole pre-market 15, 20 minutes scanning for these ideas only to watch it just rip and you get none of it. So how can we potentially mitigate this? What can we do about this? You can throw on pre-market charts, right? This is a pre-market chart from 4 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. of Amazon. Look at the little shakeout. Look at their little retest right here. Beautiful breakout. We talked about breakouts last week, so you should be very familiar with them. This is a pre-market breakout. But, key, it doesn't actually trigger until the market opens. So this is what it's trading in the pre-market, 7 a.m., now we're at like 8 a.m., and then it starts to get nice. After 8 a.m., you have this big bottoming tail, right? Right here, and then a nice tight consolidation. Okay, this is all in the pre-market. This is all from 8 a.m. to 9.30 right here, this area I'm circling, okay? Then we get a little red bar and then a green bar, and then entry at 1905, stop at 1998.50. Guys, take a look at this. 9.02 in the morning. 28 minutes before the market opens. Watch Amazon over 1905 for a small pre-market nibble. Market's a little bit extended. I'm looking at this at 9.02 in the morning, possibly buying some Amazon if it breaks above 1905. And I'm looking to do this in the pre-market. Now, this is very important. I never, ever, 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 ever go full in the pre-market. If a normal lot for you, say you're risking $500 on this trade and you have a $7 stop loss, $6 stop loss, right? You're going to need like 80 shares of that, right? Somewhere around 80 shares. I would never go full on this. I would maybe take a half lot, okay? I would maybe take a half lot. So if my normal lot on this on a $500 risk would be uh, 80 shares, call it, I would take 40 shares. If it triggered in the pre-market, once the market opens, I'm going to take a full risk on it. Once the market opens, but take take notice, 926. So at 902, I say, wow, I like this over 1905. At 926, I reconfirm, yes, I missed the Z. AMZN over 1905 on my favorites. How did I come up with 1905? Well, at 1905, that's the pre-market consolidation breakout high. That is where I came up with this number. So all you people out there in the chat room, on Stockwoods, on YouTube, everyone asking, where do you come up with these pre-market numbers, Jared? Right there. This consolidation breakout is why my favorites list says 1905. Okay? Um, so at 1905, I'm looking at this. If it breaks it before 930, I'm going to take a half lot, maybe 40 shares. If it breaks 1905 at right when the market opens, I'm going to go full and I'm going to use the low as my stop. And there it is, 9.32 a.m., Amazon 1905 by 18.99. And that's what the trade looked like. It's a trade we actually took. There is the pre-market that you can see. There's the stock going higher. There's the P&L, right? Okay, we end up making, I don't know, 900 bucks on this thing. And it went way above 1920. And guess what? You wouldn't have had any entry whatsoever because it did that off the open right when soon as the market opened amazon just ripped left a topping tail so maybe you find a little one minute buy stop, but there's no entry here so if you didn't look at the pre-market chart you would have never seen this but it's a really good breakout now remember i'm going to go back a couple slides for a second i'm going to go back a couple slides I'm looking for stocks that not only have a good gap, but are doing above average pre-market volume. So the Amazon trade, when you look at it, it's doing that above average pre-market volume that I'm looking for. There's institutional commitment here. So this is a viable breakout, okay? And we ended up making pretty good money, or I ended up making pretty good money on this, okay? Let's do another one. This is Facebook. Notice I just used the pre-market here so you could see it. These little dotted lines, that's the pre-market. That's the pre-market. See the consolidation here, Facebook? Take a look at it. Look at the pivots right here, guys. What is that pivot at? Like 199.25 right there? Pivot here, pivot here, pivot here, pivot here. This consolidation is where? Above the prior pivot highs. So we have void above to the left. That's that white space, clear space. I don't see any candlesticks over here. Void above. So I'm looking at this going, man, 
Facebook is really nice above 199.75. Let's just call it 200 hours maybe. All right. Um, so I want to look to get in this. If it breaks above 199.75, if it breaks above it before 930, I'll take a half lot or a third lot, right? So in this case, we have a 60 cent stop loss. $500 risk would be somewhere around 800 shares, give or take, right? So you might take three or 400 shares if it triggers in the pre-market. But if it triggers at 930, you go full. Let's take a look. And that's exactly what we did. There's the play. Notice at 926 in the morning, 926 in the morning, I have Facebook over 200. Technically, it's 199.75, but I said, you know, let's just wait for it to break 200, that, that century mark, okay? So I call it at 931, one minute of the day. Guys, Facebook, 199.75 by 199.15. But we already saw it in the pre-market. I already knew at 926 I wanted Facebook in this area. This is how we're able to take them at 931 because we knew five minutes prior, it's what we wanted to do. We were already prepared for Facebook before the market ever opened. There is the line in pink. 199.75 is the entry, 199.15 is the stop, and it made over 800 bucks on it. You're done trading five minutes into the day. At 9.35, 9.40, you're finished. Close out the platform and go play golf. Well, I don't know if you're allowed to do that these days, but you understand what I'm saying. All because we saw it on the pre-market with a gap up and it's above all of the resistance. Okay, let's do it again. FedEx, look at this beautiful pre-market consolidation right here. Look at it, it's gorgeous, right at 165, 165, 165, 165, 165, 165. Beautiful. Stop loss, 164.30 below the low. Look at this, 9.25 in the morning, that's five minutes before the market opens. To be clear, before the market opens, I like FedEx over 165. Where is that price point coming from? Am I just pulling out of my magic eight ball? No, it's coming from the chart. It's coming from the pre-market chart. The pre-market chart. So at 9.31, I call the trade. FedEx 165 by 164.30. No, it's not random. See, I've had people email me and say, Jared, you're randomly buying these stocks at 165. I said, no, I'm not. Look at the pre-market. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Yes, you can look at the pre-market. So that's yesterday's post-market right here. And a past this line is today's pre-market right here. So we're not randomly taking this at 165. There's an absolute pattern here and it piggybacks off of last week's breakout lecture, okay? And this is what FedEx looked like, okay? I traded FedEx above that area. Again, 9.25 in the morning, that's the favorite. 9.31, there's the, the, the actual play, okay? Boom, another 700 bucks on this thing. 165 by 164.30, that's it. Okay, next. Now, same idea, but slightly different. Same idea, slightly different. So right now we have a stock that's struggling to break 38 bucks, right? Pivot here, kind of a little red bar here, pivot here, and then what do we get? A wide range bar followed by a narrow range bar followed by blast off. What is this? This is a three bar play on a five minute pre-market chart. Okay, so enter as soon as the stock breaks above $38. That might be one second into the trading day. It might be 10 minutes into the trading day. But I wanna take this above 38 on this three bar play. And I'm gonna put my stop right under bar number two, which is 37.50. This stock ripped in five minutes. It went from 38 to 39.50 up to $40. This thing went $2 or four to one on your money in just over five minutes because of the wide bar, narrow bar rip. This is all in the pre-market. This wide range green bar, that's when the market opened. Right there, you can see the volume spike. That's when the market opened. You're gonna get into it the nanosecond it happens. Whether that's one second, 9.30 in one second, it breaks 38, you're in, stop 37.50. Whether it's 9.34, Get in at 38 bucks. Whether it's 9.35, get in at 38 bucks. It's a three bar play. And it's breaking above double top prior pivot resistance. Let's do it again. Here's another one, okay? Notice, 
CGC has some support in that 3650 area, okay? There is a pivot to the left. Guys, all somebody's asking where will I get out? Guys, all of my trades are two to one targets. All of my trades are two to one targets. All of my trades are two to one targets. So if I have a 50 cent stop loss, I'm shooting for a dollar gain. If I have a $5 stop loss, I'm shooting for a $10 gain. In this case, this is a 20 cent stop loss. So I'll be shooting for a 40 cent gain, right? 3640 by 3660 is 20 cents. I'll be shooting for 3600. That's two to one. Anyway, wide range bar takes out the support area at 3650, right? Wide range bar takes out the support area at 3650, okay? Narrow range, narrow range. So the second bar isn't narrow enough, but the third bar is. So we have a little bit of a four bar play. And as soon as the market opens, you can see the volume spike down here. As soon as the market opens, you're gonna short it at 3640. You're gonna use 3660. You could use a slightly wider stop. And that brings me to a good point. In the pre-market, it's usually better to use the wider stop because things are spreadier and things are whippier. Okay, so in this case, 3660 is the tight stop. You're probably better off using the 3670 stop, which is right here. I'll repeat this. In the pre-market, you should generally lean on the side of caution and use the wider stop loss. Okay? In this case, 3660 is the tighter stop loss. You probably want to use 3670. It has plenty of room. The extra 10 cents won't make that big of a difference. Long story short, it went from 3640 down to almost $34. $2.40 $2 on a 20 cent stop loss. That's over 10 to 1 on your money. Okay, let's do it again. Ah, uh, this one's right out of the professional trading strategies textbook. I stole it, I clipped it last night, I copied and pasted it. Guys, this one is beautiful. I love watching this. So, so far, we've gone over breakouts and breakdowns using the pre market chart. Then we just went over the three bar and four bar play using the pre market chart. What about parabolics? What about parabolics? So, what I want you guys to take a look at here is everything you're seeing here. See this big red bar here, right here? This is all pre-market. This is an obvious parabolic, right? You're gonna get in over the green bar, put your stop down to low and rip. Guys, this stock went from 57 to 66 bucks. It went $9, $9 on what was it? Like a $2 stop loss, okay? Notice the excessive gap down. Now, some of you are going, that's not excessive. It is. The stock gap from 73 to 54. It gapped from 73 to 54. That is an excessive gap. But without pre-market information or a pre-market chart, this is what it looks like. Take out the pre-market information. All you're doing is buying a stock that gapped down. That doesn't, there's no pattern there. There's no pattern there. You're just buying a stock that gapped down. There's no pattern there. But... Once we add, wait for it, the pre-market, it looks like a textbook parabolic play, doesn't it? Textbook. Perfect. And it's so much easier to justify taking because now you can actually see the red bars, right? Five or more bars down, waterfall, wide range bars, on volume, etc. It's perfect. But if you don't have your pre-market chart, it looks like that. I'd rather have the pre-market chart there so I can see this picture much more clearly. So what's the point in saying all this? Pre-market charts, in many ways, especially when they're doing big volume, institutional volume, are the same as intraday charts. I just showed you three different patterns, a parabolic, a three bar play, breakouts, all using the pre-market chart. What do they allow us to do? They allow us to get in right off the market open. This one, we had to wait five minutes. Literally, we waited five minutes, then we got in. They allow you to get in right off the pre-market or right off the open. They allow you to get better entries. And most importantly, they allow you not to miss a stock that just hits and runs. A lot of stocks gap and they just run. You don't have any opportunity to trade them. But if you use pre-market charts, you might have an opportunity to trade it. But not always. We'll get to that in a second too. Okay? So here's another one. Pre-market consolidation right at 4.30, 4.30, 4.30, 4.30. As soon as the market opens, drop. Guys, cover the pre-market up. And what does this look like? Nothing. There's no pattern here. If you cover the pre-market up right here, 
Cover this up with a piece of paper. There's nothing. It just drops off the open. But when you add the pre-market chart, it looks like the world's greatest, most perfect breakdown. And it is. You're in at 4.30, your stop's 4.32, drop, 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 it goes to 4.18, you make $12, that's six to one on your money. Impressive, right? Not bad, here's another one. CGC, pre-market breakout, and you get an opportunity to buy it later, okay? Made almost a thousand bucks on this trade, okay? Notice pre-market, CGC over 45 to the favorites list at 9.28. CGC over 45 to the favorites list at 928 because of the pre-market chart, okay? I think that's the wrong one. I don't know why that's in there. Oh, this is the right one, my bad. Here's another one, pre-market breakout. Those are the fills. Notice, the reason I put this up, notice how early I got in, 9.30 and seven seconds. 9.30 and seven seconds. I got in seven seconds into the day. Most other people would be like, Jared, you're buying nothing. You're buying thin air. You're just randomly gambling. No, I am not gambling. I'm taking a breakout, consolidating in the $23 area. And I got a crappy fill. Notice I got filled some at 03, 04, 05, 06, et cetera. Beautiful play though. $23, guys, in a matter of what? 12 minutes, it popped a dollar twenty. Okay? Impressive. Impressive. So now. No, it's not the movie waiting, okay? When do we wait? I just gave you all the perfect scenarios when you just, you hit it right at 929, 930, 931. I mean, textbook beautiful. Well, it's obvious when you wait. You wait when they don't give you anything. Let's say, for example, you have a nice gap up like this and there's no pre-market advantage. So despite stalking this in the pre-market due to an excellent gap and a nice pre-market chart, we weren't able to get a quality entry until later. So we're looking at this over 129, wide bar, narrow bar, and guess what? The three bar play just never triggered, right? It never triggered the entry, so we have to wait. You get a pullback, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, engulfing bar, almost buy on the buy setup. It's a 50% retracement, right? near a rising moving average with a green bar, engulfing bar, buy it at 127.45, put your stop at 126.25 and ride it up. Now, what's the lesson to be learned? The lesson to be learned is this. I should probably put this in red. Let's put that in red. All right. The lesson to be learned, guys, is don't take a good gapping stock off your list. In fact, Unwall was talking about that today. On Macy's, I think it was, wasn't it? Just because the stock didn't give us that perfect entry we wanted, don't just erase it from your, your, you know, your symbol list. Don't take it off your watch list. Keep it on your watch list. If it has a nice gap, it has a nice gap. So not every single trade triggers exactly where we want it to. I wanted this to trigger at 129. That was where the pre-market was. It gave a beautiful three-bar play, but it just never triggered there. So we get the buy set up. Hopefully you can sell a little bit at the 129 area on the way up. Not every trade gives us exactly what we're looking for, but they doesn't mean they can't ultimately give us an entry later. In this case, we had to wait till 10 o'clock, 10, 15. Okay, so we had to wait. Here's another example. Here's a stock that gapped up on a nice gap. I'll blow this up in a second, don't worry. On a nice gap up, okay, was looking to trade this over 334. That's where the, the pre-market was looking good. It pulled back, bounced, pulled back, bounced, and gave us a breakout at 333. Consolidated back to the rising moving average. Entry 333, stop 332.30. Very tight stop for the stock. But my point is it didn't give us that early entry that I wanted. But we got in it later, and this is what it looked like. Okay? You can see it right there. And we waited till 949. Guys, this was a two-minute trade I made... 1400 bucks on, okay? And you'll note, I don't win on every trade, but when I win, I win twice as big as I lose, right? Risking about 700 bucks a trade here, some slippage on this one. It happens, it's part of trading, okay? But when I win, I win two to one. So this wasn't a great day. It was only about a one hour day after five trades. But the point was, is we took this, 
okay? We took this that I really wanted to get in at 334 with no pattern because it had a pre-market pattern but didn't give us an entry. It never triggered and then immediately pulled back, bounced, pulled back, and then gave us an entry here. We took it later on. Took it at nine, what is it, a one minute chart? We took it like 950, give or take. In fact, I can tell you exactly, 949 and 34 seconds. It's exactly when we got in, all right? Got in just under the whole number there for slippage purposes. And in two minutes, literally two minutes, we're out of this thing. Two and a half minutes, to be honest. By 952, I was gone. All right. And really, it was more like 951.99. You can see the shares over here. Patience pays off. Not every trade is going to give you the perfect entry. Now, I want to talk about one more thing. This chart I slowed you, I showed you guys last week. This is, this is from exactly from last week's lecture. Guys, you can buy this, whether it's in the pre-market or right at exactly at 9.30 if you're trading it as a swing trade. If this is 92.50 by 91 on a 60-minute chart and it's a swing trade, I'll repeat, swing trade, you're gonna hold it for two, three, four, five days. The second it breaks 92.50, you're gonna buy it and you're gonna put your stop under 91. You don't have to wait for the three-bar play. So if at 9.25 in the morning, you see this thing triggering or at 9.31 in the morning, 9.37 in the morning, there's no great entry, but you're playing the 60 minute breakout. So you can, you can buy that there. Okay, that's acceptable. Here's another example on a daily. Here's a daily breakout at 195, right? This is from last week also. You can buy this at 9.30 in the morning, 9.37 in the morning, 10.02 in the morning. The second it breaks 195, you trade it. This is a daily chart swing trade, okay, with a stop at 190. You can get in immediately on this as soon as it breaks 195. So I hope I'm being very clear about that, all right? So normally in a perfect world, guys, all right, I'll go back a couple of slides. In a perfect world, we're looking for a beautiful pre-market chart just like this. Beautiful. 199.75, 199.15. The second the market opens, it looks like this. 931, 932, 933 in the morning, we're getting into this and we're making money literally in two, three minutes. That's perfect. But not every trade is perfect. Sometimes, I'll go to it, sometimes we have to wait, right? We look for a perfect entry, which is right here at 129, but we never got it. It never triggered. So we wait, okay? Just like this trade here on, what is it, Netflix, whatever it is. We wait, okay? So I hope that makes sense to you guys. There are times you can be aggressive when it gives you a perfect pre-market chart and triggers. There are times we have to be patient and wait when the pre-market doesn't trigger and maybe it doesn't trigger for 20, 30, 40 minutes. You just wait. Your goal, guys, is to make money. Your goal is not to actually take trades. Your goal is to make money. We just use charts as the vehicle we use to make money. That's it. Some people play golf to make money. Some people do elect, you know, I had an electrician in my house yesterday. He does that to make money. Some people sell flowers to make money. We trade stocks to make money. So what do we do? Unless we get the perfect look that we want. You don't take it. You sit back and you wait. You guys have a problem with this. Many of you have a big time problem with this. Why'd you buy it? Well, it looked higher. Was there a pattern? No, but it looked higher. And the, sometimes it works and you feel justified in doing what you're doing. We are pattern-based traders, which means without a pattern, we don't trade, right? Pretty simple, straightforward stuff, okay? Pray, straightforward stuff. Guys, you enter all your trades using stop limit orders. You use stop market orders for your stop losses and your targets are limit orders. Your targets are limit orders. Your entries are stop limit orders and your stop losses are market orders, stop market orders, okay? So regardless of how nice a gap is or how much we like something, I get this comment a lot in the chat room, we never randomly buy it. We must always have a pattern and guess what? Every pattern has an entry, stop, and a target. Predetermined. Because if you don't, all right, to come full circle, if you don't, you end up shorting the DAX and the FTSE and losing $9,000 in your account with three weeks of trading experience and no stop loss. Or better yet, you end up shorting Tivix 
at 102 and watch it go to six hundred and fifty five hundred fifty dollars against you or forty six thousand two hundred thirty six dollars against you does that sound like fun i don't think it's fun all right so a lot of you guys out there seeing these people make huge gains on google they're gamblers oh i made a hundred grand on this they're pure gamblers and there's about a 99.99997 percent chance they will give it back i have emails from that too I was going to put another one up today. Somebody told me they made 125. This is in the last week, by the way. I should have put this in. They made $125,000, okay, in their first three months trading. And I'm first of all, I'm thinking, how is that possible? You're a brand new trader. And then they gave back all but $3,000 of it. They literally gave back $122,000 of their $125,000 gain. I'll put, maybe I'll put that email up next week. I should have put it in this week. They still made three grand. I guess that's good but you gave up $122,000. One, you should have never been in the position to make $125,000. So people are, they do just crazy things. You guys are doing crazy things out there. Stop, this is a long-term business. This isn't a short-term get rich quick thing. Ooh, I have to be home for the next few months because of what's going on in the world right now. So I think I'm just gonna hack at trading and try to pay my bills. It doesn't work that way. The market doesn't care about you. Oh, my, my kid needs new shoes, so what? The mortgage is due. So what? The market doesn't care. It's going to take you one to three years to get good at this, more likely two to three years. And you're not going to do it with 500 or 1,000 bucks. Come in properly, plan properly, prepare properly, and do this right. The reason most of you don't is because you don't have a boss telling you what to do. You're your own boss, and it comes down to integrity. You don't have any. Are you really being honest with yourself? Or does it sound too good to be true? If it does, it's too good to be true. I'm telling you, this is a hard business. One of the hardest things that you will ever, ever, ever try in your life. So treat it that way. Treat it as one of the hardest things you'll ever try, which means be prepared. Listen to what people with more experience are telling you, not the people on Google telling you you're going to get rich quick. The other ones. All right, so that will do it for this week's lecture, guys, on pre-market charts. Um, hopefully you guys learned a little bit of how to take advantage of some of those early charts. I want to leave you with one small caveat. If you are a brand new trader in your first couple months, be very, very careful trading pre-market charts. Very careful. In fact, you probably shouldn't do it for your first couple months. And if you do do it, do it with extremely small share size, like one share, five shares, just to get a feel for it. It's much spreadier and much whippier in the pre-market, guys. Much spreadier and much whippier. You really have to learn how pre-market charts trade. So if you're a new trader, please relax. Don't get you know too excited or ahead of yourself. But to everybody else out there that has some experience, start taking a look at those pre-market and post-market charts. You might find yourself being able to get in trades earlier than you thought with bigger profits than you thought. So that'll do it for this week's lecture. I'm Jared Wesley. I'll see you guys again next week. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.